Who do you want to see at Lockin? If you can. Well, Bobby and Phil are doing Terrapin, so yeah. that'll be a thing. Fogarty. Fogarty. Mm-hmm. Uh, Panic's our, playing. Yeah, our friend uh, Margo Price and her band, and they're all of our good friends, they're playing. His Golden Messenger's playing. Well, you mentioned uh, Bobby and Phil. Let's talk about the dead. Yeah. How much of an influence are the dead on you guys? Never heard of them. Well, I think Lock-In in particular is a festival where the the festival really curates a family vibe and the people that go there are re- like they look at the lineup and they seek out the new They're bands invested. each year. Yeah. And like uh, in other festivals it's just it's almost more like the fact that your name's on the poster is the most is, is the most important right. thing cuz that'll get you more gigs ideally. Yeah. I mean, hopefully I mean, you know, I've been to plenty of festivals and I'll f- I like to actively find the bands that I haven't heard of and go, "All right, well who are these guys?" and then YouTube them and right. say, "All right, let's go hit their setup right. if we can." And then ultimately right. we end up sitting around the <laughs> yeah. the campsite right. because we, we drank too much the night before right. or something like that. Totally. Yeah. And I feel bad about it, but then I get over it. But you're also the kind of person that looks for new music on the internet and tweets about things when right. you like it. I mean, you're, I mean that's just a small, you're, that's not the normal sort of herd member. You're, you're an outlier. You're invested. And so it, it, I think it takes enough of people like that to really kind of push the, the, the masses into like thinking that a band is valuable. I was telling you earlier that uh, I was talking to somebody at a different show who mentioned you guys, and I hadn't heard of you before. Yeah. And so I just went online that night. I was like, oh, what was the name of that band with the funny name that they mentioned? <laughs> and I was Los like, Cologne? Los Cologne? Los Cologne, something <laughs> like that. And then I tried to do find the translation, and there is none, which no. is cool. No. Uh, but then I was like, this is really good. And then, you know, I get the iTunes albums, and yeah. next thing you know, they're coming to town. So I, you know, hopefully people still have that kind of curiosity about mm-hmm. bands. I and mean, we've come across a lot of those types of listeners yeah. in our uh, travels. So that's, I guess, why we just kind of sense like that's the way it's yeah. happening. For If it's going to happen for us, it's going to be on those kind of terms. Right, mostly. right. And ultimately, you know, for as much as we sit around like pseudoscientists and analyze like the physics of making it, like really what it, when it comes down to it is just like eventually you have to just like just focus on what you're doing and be present and just work really hard every day. Yeah. And the more you do that, the more likely whatever magical equation can happen will happen. Yeah, I think it's a matter of if, if people knew how to make something, you know, go viral or for a band to get found immediately, uh, they'd be worth more than anybody could pay them. Totally. For what they could oh, do. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there is no solution to it except for just be good. Pretty much the last year I spent every dollar I've earned, been given, and then some on credit cards into my current, you know, pedal board amp situation. Um, you know, touring, you kind of just throw, you know, your your wallet, your phone, your keys, and your gear and go. And that's man. pretty yeah. much what it's it a, is. You yeah, we that. actually don't get to spend enough on gear. We'd like to spend yeah. more on gear, but right now it's just keeping the, the thing afloat and alive and yeah. active. So. Yeah, that's where a lot of the money goes. It goes to paying rent. It goes to, you know. It's to paying for Facebook. Investing into life. Okay. Paying for <laughs> Facebook ads. <laughs> yeah, Facebook, Facebook ads, Do those yeah. things pay off? Yeah. I yeah. don't know if people realize, but, like, they if, actually if you see something ubiquitously, it's not at all because it happened organically. Yeah. And, like, I don't think enough people realize that. No, no, no. We're but, all for sale. Everything I don't, don't want to ha- say or deconstruct the man or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of money goes into, like, making a record... Yeah. get pushed okay but know? these are all very practical things for your business for lack of a better right. way of putting it what kind of bullshit do you spend mo- too much money on uh you know cigarettes you said mind <laughs> expanding experiences yeah you oh. know existential experiences yeah, yeah those kind yeah. of experiences yeah yeah, yeah. Those kind of experiences. You sometimes know. you gotta take a trip somewhere. You know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you do have to take a trip yeah. somewhere. Yeah, we travel. And gotta sometimes point it's a you get into a town, and there's somebody <coughs> who wants to travel with yeah. you and help you travel together. Sometimes you can travel, and you don't have to really go anywhere. That's <laughs> right. I mean, if there's anything good about being in a band, is that people want to travel with you yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. We like people to love to be uh, the travel agent we like for the band, travel, yeah. Yeah. and they go and go and take the take the ride. Um, I think we spent a lot of money on condiments at our house. Yeah, a lot of, a lot a lot of mayo, of, uh, ketchup, sriracha. sriracha. So you guys live together? Yep. Is it yeah. just the two of you in the house? No. Mm-mm. Got uh, another roommate, Billy. Yeah. Hey, Billy. Hey, Billy. Billy's at home? Billy's, Billy's at, at home. home. Well, yeah. he might not be at home, but he's... But he's technically in Nashville He's on the right home now. front right now. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so what's Billy's role? <laughs> Let's talk about Billy for a second. What's Billy's role in the house? Well, Billy actually recorded our second uh, record, Dose. And, oh, he did? Uh, yeah, he went to uh, Athens, to uh, University of Georgia, and was like a record-setting field goal kicker. And he did a bunch of work with that band MGMT, and he's just kind of he's an awesome dude. He's starred in films. He's been all over the world. Yeah, he's... Yeah. He's done a lot of stuff. He, anything he wants to do, he's yeah. really successful at it. He's a renaissance cat. So. But right. he, but we, you know, at the end of the day, we'll all sit down on the couch and um, talk about philosophy and uh, and politics and trends and culture, and we'll watch TV. And he's a good uh, buffer for our constant uh, being in each other's lives, working together and touring and right, you know, living together and all that stuff. So. Well, on the road, it's definitely uh, iPhone cables, chargers. <laughs> Do you hoard them? <laughs> oh, I, I found two, and I'm hoarding them. I'm hoarding them in my backpack. It's like a, it's like an economy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't own that many things uh, aside from my drums and that like musical equipment. It's like a few pairs. Of sh- my Nikes are really important to me. Nope, yeah, I got my Agassiz on. Oh my God, those are Agassiz, huh? Yeah. Nice. They're, they're the reissues. So they're All right. School, He's going to have a, a side shoe business one day. Y- yeah, right. <laughs> Are you a shoe guy? I used to be. I, I, I was like a, a pretty serious sneakerhead for a while after college and during college. And then became clear that that would be a really expensive yeah. thing to try to keep up with. And it was like, ah, all right, I'm going to just kind of back off a little bit. But I don't know. I mean, th- those are important to me. And my car is important to me but it's a piece of junk so i don't know so there's no like fair family thing that's been passed down that you've got no 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 all okay. right well the agassiz are pretty cool yeah what about you uh well i mean yeah i mean clearly music gear stuff i my dad uh gave me a uh his dad was in world war ii and he acquired uh a german uh, officers Luger. Okay. And he handed that down to me, which is just really fascinating. I mean, you brought up heirlooms. That's, that's what I'm saying. That'd be yeah, kind of cool. That, it's interesting. I don't yeah, know if it's, is it still functional? I think it is. I haven't taken it to, I don't have any ammo. I haven't taken it to a range. I'm not a gun guy. But yeah. uh, just the notion of my grandpa being in uh, France he, or Germany or he something. He stole it from a Nazi. He picked it up off a dead guy, or maybe he was a hero. I don't know. Either way, I mean, it's a pretty cool thing to pass yeah, down though. Totally. Morton and I were backing up a buddy of ours named Raylan Baxter uh, as his backing band about four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Our buddy Spencer Cullum Jr. was uh, who plays uh, with everybody on pedal steel, but he was there too. Anyways, we were driving to Denver, uh, and it was like the first snow of the year coming from like the Midwest to Denver, and so none of the salt trucks were out, and there was a like 15 semi pile up. We barely escaped with our lives onto the median trucks were slamming into each other in front of our eyes we pulled a like a, a an unconscious guy out of a crushed semi cab stuff was blowing up it was really scary yeah. oh my gosh yeah but so nobody died nobody died but it was a pretty well, that makes it a good story then yeah it was yeah. a traumatic it was a traumatic because it was like 7 30 in the morning so like some yeah. of us were sleeping and we wake up to like a wild I Pumping mean, brakes, was, yeah. skinny yeah. tires, just like just black ice. Yeah, and then you're like, I don't know what I'm holding on for, but and then, <laughs> yeah. But we were very fortunate. So yeah, I thought you were gonna tell them about the the other story, but that was a better story. I don't know. Hold on, we can't escape the other know story what the though. The other now. story you're referring to is we had to. We had like a case of bed bugs or something oh. like floating around. <laughs> Jesus. We had to like do laundry at like two in the morning, and he was kind of drunk and. <laughs> we were all like confused as to why we had to pick that moment to do it, yeah. but it was decided that we all had to like strip down and get all of our clothing into the wash. And uh, we did. If you could go back in time or into the future, where would you want to go? What would you want to see or do? Yeah, I totally want to see the dinosaurs. Yeah? Were yeah, you a absolutely. dinosaur kid growing yeah. up? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, and in fact, the local library in the suburbs of Chicago where I lived had my whole toy dinosaur collection on display in a glass case. What was your favorite? Uh, Dinonychus, because that was the original Velociraptor before Michael Crichton made the Velociraptor popular. Dinonychus was the guy with the... The claw. The claw, yeah. Yeah. And he was the actual six foot tall guy. And then Michael Crichton just made Velociraptor what it is. The Velociraptor was actually a a small guy. So the Velociraptor was real then? 
Yeah, but small, but he liked the name better, so he added the name to the six foot. Uh, this is really nerdy, I'm sorry. No, 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 but to be fair, Velociraptor does <laughs> yeah. sound better. Well, it means bird of prey, right? Velociraptor means bird of prey, Sam Neill, yeah. So, so it worked for his narrative because of the evolution of dinosaurs into birds and the West African DNA spontaneously changing right. sex in a single sex environment. Uh, but you're revealing something to me. And that is that you you were a nerd, huh? Oh, yeah. I think we both <laughs> were. Oh, we all. Yeah. Were you a nerd? He was, no, he was yeah. maybe cooler than me because he had uh, he was better at sports, maybe? No, I was a band geek. Yeah, yeah. he was a nerd. He's going to have a, a side shoe business one day. <laughs>